In this video, we are going to take a look at cavity painting and sculpting in 3D Coats Sculpt Workspace. That also involves freeze mask painting, and there are some new options to the freeze tool that I will mention along the way. So let's go ahead and get into it by talking about cavity sculpting. This is utilizing a freeze mask to isolate certain parts of the mesh, such as wrinkles or crevices bumps or perhaps horns and so on until recently a user would typically need to do this in the paint workspace so if you were sculpting here in the sculpt workspace and you needed to apply a freeze mask in these isolated areas then you would need to step into the paint workspace and work with conditions painting here you can select the condition from the list menu here at the top of the user interface. Always will be the default condition, which means that it will always allow painting or sculpting without restriction. The other conditions such as more and concave or convex are relatively self-explanatory. If the condition is based on deviations in the surface's shape, then it will rely on a curvature map. If it is based on lighting conditions such as shadow or more in lit areas, then it will need an ambient occlusion map. To make either one of the maps, we simply need to go to the edit menu and select it from the list. So let's step back into the scope workspace. One important reminder is that these conditions work only when your object is in surface mode, indicated by an S icon on the left-hand side of the sculpt tree layer. This model is currently in voxel mode, and I'm going to switch by clicking on the V. We can paint in voxel mode, and it has true volumetric painting capabilities, but one thing it does not have is freeze mask functionality, at least not as of this recording. Okay, so we are now in surface mode and I can see in the surface brushes section, the freeze tool. Now when I click on that, we have new options in the tool options panel to store or save a freeze mask to a layer. And what it effectively does is converts the freeze selection into color information. So even after we have cleared a freeze mask, we can still retrieve the selection from this newly created layer. Let me go ahead and try to demonstrate that. I'll just apply a freeze mask. And right now it's not stored on the layer, but if I choose freeze mask to layer, it's going to create a new layer and call it polygroup. So if I make another mask and hit the same thing, it's going to give me a polygroup two and so on. Okay. But yeah, why do I have this green color here? Well, that's because Recoat converted it to color. And I can also retrieve this from the pose tool as well. If you create a free selection before you activate the pose tool, 3 coat will convert it to a pose selection. And then later, I can convert it to a freeze selection. Nothing's changed on this layer. That color information is still there. I just have a freeze mask the way I had it before. Okay, so just as you would in Photoshop, hitting Control D would remove a selection. Now it's time to apply a freeze mask using conditions. I can go to this list menu at the top of the UI, just like in the paint workspace. And I can choose more on concave. When I do that, I'll get the same material preview panel or window. I can expand it. What I'm gonna do is go over to the activity bar and pick a different shader to make it easier to see. I'll select a layer that's not hidden. Prior to this, you may have noticed a little pop-up notification at the bottom of the screen indicating that I needed to bake a curvature map in order to use this paint condition. Okay, so we'll do that by going to the edit menu and choosing calculate curvature. I will pause while it calculates. 
All right, with our cavity map now baked and applied to a layer, it's hidden by default, but we can examine it as needed. I will hide that now. The curvature map will inform 3D coat internally where the raised areas and the crevices are. Next, I'll go to the conditions list and choose more on concave and expand the preview window to make it a little bit larger. We can adjust the cavity width. As well as the degree and contrast. All right, that'll do it for now. I don't really need to adjust the contrast, so I'll collapse the preview window. And in the e-panel, I want to select one of the first four or five brush draw modes in order to paint select my freeze mask. I'll increase my brush size by right clicking and dragging to the right. I'll go ahead and pause while I apply the freeze mask to the rest of the model. Now that the selection has been made, let's click this button in order to store it to a layer. When needed, we can adjust the freeze opacity here at the top of the tool options panel. If we look to the top of the layers panel, we can see the new poly group layer that was created from the freeze mask. I'll rename it. Cavity freeze mask. I can hide that now because I don't really need it at the moment. But yeah, so we have our mass now and what we can do is choose a tool to sculpt on the raised surfaces. For example, I could scatter some random bumps in the eye region. One option I could use is jitter in the brush options in order to randomly scatter the bumps. But in this case, I think I'll use a brush stamp draw mode. I'll also select a layer or create a new one in order to store sculpt layer information. Okay, and then I'll choose something else like the inflate brush and a regular brush draw mode in order to add some thickness or volume to the skin folds. I'll speed up the playback for just a bit in order to keep this video as concise as possible. If we want to shrink the freeze mask a little bit or expand it, we can also do that from the freeze menu here. You can sharpen it, smooth it. Yeah, you can even hide the frozen area. For example, if you freeze the head region, you want to just focus on the body. You could freeze that and then just hide it. All right, and I think that will suffice for demonstration purposes. Let's now go ahead and drop the selection by hitting the Control D keyboard combination. I'll now zoom in to see the results of the work where we applied some of the little bumps. We can also utilize conditions for vertex painting here in the Sculpt workspace as well. It's worth noting that when you are painting in the Sculpt workspace with Vertex Paint, you can also utilize the depth channel in order to sculpt simultaneously. However, it's just a generic extrusion compared to the surface sculpting brushes, which are more nuanced. Nevertheless, it's perfect for general case usage, such as using smart materials in order to simultaneously apply color, glossiness or roughness, metalness, and depth in the form of displacement.
Examples of this might be painting and sculpting things like cobblestone pathways, perhaps skin textures, dirt roads or brick walls, etc., etc. So in summary, conditions is somewhat of a masking system all on its own, as they do restrict where painting and surface extrusions can be applied. But when sculpting, at least as of this recording, the standard sculpting brushes do not respect conditions and thus we would have to rely on freeze masks in order to restrict where extrusions can be applied to the surface of a model. And with that, we will conclude this overview of conditions-based painting and masking that allow us to confine our sculpting or painting edits to very specific areas of the model. I hope you found it helpful. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video.